main training manager at Wing University. She has extensive experience in the field of training and research in psychology and children's education. When holding the position of the Director of Early Childhood Education and Research Center, she has made numerous contributions to the research and application of early childhood development programs and the advanced early childhood education model to Vietnam education. Uh, so please welcome Professor Chin to the stage. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I think that after two presentations, which are quite excellent, maybe uh, you all feel excited, right? But I myself feel a, a lot of pressure because the previous two presentations on uh, children and STEAM for Vietnamese children and uh, 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 administration in education and early childhood uh, education um, my presentation will be more policy focused so that we can see that with the renovation trend what orientation, what renovation the education in Vietnam will have for the next decade. In my presentation I will focus more on the two parts. First, the uh, graph for the early childhood ed uh, education program renovation in Vietnam. And the second part, I would like to talk about the principles and orientation as well as our uh, 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 intention for such a renovation. I would like to add a point that for the last three years, our institutes as well as my own center have uh, uh, focused our study on the, the renovation of early edu uh, childhood education in the region and in different countries. We look into their programs and also we take into our the consideration the context in Vietnam so that we can provide the scientific uh, evidence to the Ministry of Education and Training for the development of early childhood education beyond 2020. So, uh, referring to the renovation, we'd like to focus on the three grounds. First, the legal, second, scientific, and the last one, practical ground. The three um, uh, will provide a strong premise for us to work out how the renovation can be conducted. Now, let's talk about the legal ground. As you know that by 2030, it is expected that uh, we will uh, complete, we will conduct the evaluation of the uh, UN agenda on uh, SDG, particularly the goal number 4, 4.2 as mentioned by Mr. Hyde. So by 2030, all the children can have access to uh, quality um, early childhood education so boys and girls in the range of the uh, zero to six year old can have access to such a uh, quality education in vietnam we have done a good job in the range of uh, uh, three to five but what about those under three can we make it and secondly we often say that in the range of three to five we can have a uh, high school enrollment rate of uh, no. But uh, are we ensuring the right equity for our own children um, are able to have access to quality uh, education? Yes, we need to talk about the necessity for robust education uh, renovation in Vietnam. First, necessary for us to uh, conduct the uh, uh, assessment of the implement implementation of the party resolution on the fundamental and comprehensive innovation in education and training in Vietnam. And we have uh, adopted the education law with the fundamental changes. Uh, particularly, you can see the provision related to early childhood education. For example, the uh, early childhood teachers' qualification, not just uh, um, the uh, high school um, level for their pedagogical competency, but now it should be the college level. And that's not to mention the necessity to have more integrative approach in early childhood education. 
um, in the July uh, 2020, 20, our revised education law uh, enacted in 2019 uh, will take effect with fundamental changes. So necessary for us to take action. And also, as you know, the school uh, curriculum after um, the Effort, uh, with the efforts to develop the new one will start to be launched uh, at the grade 1 and 6 in 2020. So what about the kids uh, who are going to start grade 1 and how to make them successful? Necessary for us to review our home program and to see if we are ready with our uh, competencies. And also by 2020, we will finalize 10 years uh, of uh, the education development strategy and by 2021 we will start the next uh, strategy and uh, our goal is to have a visible improvements in our ne uh, next period as compared with what we can do for the current period so we are facing the challenges for a more um, renovation these are very important uh, ground and also uh, serve as a premise for us to renovate our program Next, we would like to talk about the scientific evidence uh, for our program renovation uh, for the period 2010-2019. So far, we have uh, acquired a lot of scientific evidence to demonstrate that necessary for us to focus on the preschooling level, the early years of the life, uh, particularly the first 1,000 days, and we know what we sh should focus on and how. And in my presentation, I would like to focus on uh, some uh, statements uh, in this slide. For example, for the first uh, 1,000 days, uh, we can see critically important stages because in this stage, the neural connection can be developed, uh, can be formed and developed so robustly uh, and uh, more strongly and robustly than ever in the uh, later stages of the life. And you can see, this is uh, human brain development. As you can see, the curves here. Say so the language, emotion, cognition, all such can uh, be uh, uh, formed and re reach the peak uh, in the range of the first 36 months. Long, long time ago, those who are involved in the preschooling level and those who have been trained in preschooling level all have heard that before the five years, um, the child can uh, uh, shape the foundation for the um, their future personality. We have heard uh, of such uh, statements, but we do not have a clear scientific evidence. But now, such uh, uh, scientific evidence has been uh, confirmed and has been published. So if we wish to have a civilized society, if we have uh, happy family and uh, individuals, we need to invest in early education stage, particularly the first 1,000 days. And here, Professor Hai have mentioned this. It is uh, demonstrated with the uh, different econometric uh, um, models that uh, the investment ratio in the early stage of life uh, uh, can uh, be the highest as compared with any other investment in the later stages of life. And uh, also from studies, it has been shown that um, there is impact on the malnutrition, on the neuron development, and as a result, there can be impact on the comprehensive development uh, observed in the relevant children. You know that the shortage of nutrition uh, poverty can result in uh, 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 less uh, chance for the development. But if you look into the uh, scans of the brain development, you can see the less uh, neuron connections. You can compare the picture on the top and the lower one. Um, the, uh, the top one uh, from those who suffer from the stunted growth and the lower one is for the normal ones. So we can see the differences in the neuron connections between the two photographs, right? And you can see the impact of malnutrition. 
here the gray matter, the white matter, and the CSF, and you can see the differences between the stunted one and the non-stunted ones. So possible for us to say that in the early days of the life, nutrition play uh, a vital role, a decisive role in the child's development. Apart from the investment in the uh, quality preschooling education, and more recent studies have shown that not only nutrition and early and quality education can create such a change, but also the interaction. Um, the emotional connection between the child and the mother or the caregivers. S uh, such interaction can uh, have influence on the nutritious uh, absorption um, uh, and um, the accordingly uh, such absorption can be made for use of and to facilitate the development and such uh, interaction can uh, in its turn impact our education activities and it can help the, create a certain positive impact to uh, facilitate the comprehensive development in the child. And more recently, we are very interested in the, the cells and the positive uh, connections between the child and the caregiver. So, when the positive interaction between children and adults um, is available, the child uh, can receive the positive uh, impact and it can get away from uh, negative or passive, passive uh, impact and therefore we can reduce the risk for the children. So you can see that uh, apart from good nutrition allocation, we need to pay due attention to the positive uh, connections and interaction. And this is a recent finding just for the last five years. And we can see a lot of forums and scientific statements and findings um, have um, uh, confirmed this fact. And we can see increasing attention to the cells. And this is one of the research uh, findings. So for a baby, for example, with how, what would be uh, happening if uh, it is a positive uh, interaction? Because the baby can't talk and they uh, just look at the facial expression. In this case, it is a mother. So when we are smiling to the baby, the re um, uh, his uh, reaction can be quite uh, positive. That is because quite likely that um, there can be some kind of uh, um, chemical and um, and uh, physiological reaction can occur in the baby's mind, and uh, that can uh, stimulate the child's uh, 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 feeling. And when the mother's face is cold, the child is scared. And the, you can see in this picture, the baby has to turn away. The baby is scared and uh, bursts into crying. You can see what impact the facial expression can have on the baby, on the baby connection with adult. So not the babies, but also for the school children. If we are welcoming by hugging them, embracing them, with the uh, encouraging word to uh, them, you know, they can start an uh, energetic and uh, efficient day. But if we are cold, uh, they can have their emotion lowered, and even they can be overwhelmed by negative feeling, and that can affect their day and their activities. So. What we should do? Well, it is a process. Uh, positive interaction, it is a cycle. And it is compulsory for adults, or parents, or caregivers to observe very carefully and continuously so that we can identify uh, the children's uh, communication side. For example, what they need, what difficulty they have, so that we can respond to them. The point is, we no need for us to answer directly, rather we should support, we should facilitate the child's development. So 
with our support, the child can address the, his or her problem, or he or she or he can uh, sort out the problem, or they can create new um, idea, or sometimes they can uh, um, demonstrate the new science accordingly. That is the result of positive uh, impact from such a cycle. For more uh, details, I would like to, search, uh, to suggest you refer to the handouts. Next, uh, uh, there are five uh, dimensions in the child's development. And I think that uh, uh, social emotion is really critical. And this is uh, what we seen as uh, one dimension as important as the others. So if you see the positive interaction as uh, a very important thing in our program, you should see it as a focus, as a foundation, both uh, cognitively and policy and implementation. However, until now, we haven't been able um, to ensure such a principle. Now let's talk about the practical for uh, ground. Now I'd like to go through quickly program available in other countries. In the, those countries, we develop uh, uh, preschooling uh, education. They have uh, three levels. At the national level, it is a kind of uh, standard or frame. And at the local level, for example, with those countries which have uh, uh, program uh, at the state uh, the, for the country which will, um, have the more autonomy they can have the state level program of the provincial program and uh, most of the school have their own uh, program uh, relevant to their vision and mandates and uh, we understand that uh, uh, 2016 preschooling uh, program has been in place allowing the schools to develop their own programs. Honestly speaking, the state-owned schools haven't developed their own. And this is what many public uh, uh, preschools in Vietnam has to consider and to develop their own curriculum. And also in these countries, let's see what they have selected to be their focus. Now let's look into the Singaporean preschooling. Uh, program. You can see that cell is uh, considered as the uh, uh, focus in their curriculum and also in their policy as well as in their standards. We can see um, this focus uh, visibly. What about that in Australia? We see the same approach and also in the national standards we can also see it. Now let's talk about uh, the current status in Vietnam. Actually, in my slide, there can be more information, and for now, I'd like to emphasize the following points. We do see prop, uh, quality problems in our uh, quality uh, at schools, and we have to improve it to ensure the equity, and we um, should uh, uh, improve this in order to have uh, uh, the um, uh, opportunities for child development. Now, we can see that in the range of 3 to 5, more than 99% of the children have access to school. And also we have got many regulations to improve the teacher's life, the living condition. We have got projects, programs, and also regulation in order to uh, have a better infrastructure, particularly to facilitate the children going to school, to have a better access to school. And we can see significant improvements in our physical infrastructure. However, we do see uh, a limitation. Yes, we all know our uh, achievement and success. But what about the uh, constraints that we have to overcome in the next uh, uh, period? So now we have to s improve the, uh, um, the accessibility for the children in the range of 0 to 3. Not compulsory for the all the children to, to go to school we, they should benefit from the quality even when they are school so we need to educate their parents 
that um, the parents' capacity should be built. Accordingly, the parents should have the high sell and they know how to perform the policy interaction with the children. And now I'd like to talk about the malnutrition and tanting rate for the time being. The such a rate is still high. And more recently, uh, uh, we have found that uh, uh, very difficult to reduce such a rate. 24% of the children under 5 is suffering from the malnutrition, but how to reduce, to lower this rate? We need to have other policy to support the children. Otherwise, impossible for us to make any um, uh, better off improvements. And also, we need to improve our code of ethic compliance, the rules and regulations in the school settings and so on. But the point is, the distraction from uh, uh, distraction in the child care and also uh, gender inequity still uh, exist in the school setting in the family. And now I would like to talk a little bit about the subsidy policy for the children uh, in the preschooling level, particularly for the uh, ethnic minorities and the physical facilities. Another point I'd like to mention. Uh, is integrative education for children with disability. For example, the children with the slight disability seems to be okay, but uh, not uh, that might not be the case for the ones with the uh, uh, more severe uh, disability. These are the remaining problems that we have to address in the next 10 years so that we can achieve um, the goal 4.2 in the um, SDG. So now I'd like to move on to the next part. Uh, yes, uh, these are just some proposed uh, orientation because we are still uh, conducting the researches for evidence to submit to the MOAT for the program development beyond 2020. So our principle for the next period is that we should uh, continue with our child centered uh, approach, but necessary for us to focus on uh, forming and development the values and core skills for children in the context of Industrial Revolution 4.0. And also we should promote the comprehensive development for the children, particularly we should place emphasis on the cell as a uh, 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 focus and also the um, um, program in the next decade should inherit the success from the program con being implemented in the current decade and also we should learn the experience from other country and we should ensure the equity for every child and it should be made relevant to Vietnamese context and there should be the positive and efficient engagement by family and community and also we should ensure good transferability so that the kids can start the great one successfully and finally we hope that we think that there can be three levels in our program for the time being we have the national program but the school haven't got the, their own school level uh, pro a program we understand that at the local level it has not been made compulsory to have the school level uh, uh, the programs I think that in the future we will have a national program, but when it comes down to the sub-national level, uh, there should be um, the instruction from the local uh, of, uh, um, administration to instruct the school to develop uh, their own uh, tailored uh, 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 curriculum and each and every school should have a specific program and the school uh, program and or curriculum is so critical so that the schools can ensure that their curriculum their program is really relevant to their own context uh, and relevant to the uh, kids in their schools and also at the national level we can develop the uh, national quality standards and the national program and out of the uh, such a program the structure seems to be might seems to be uh, uh, simpler than it is now but still it uh, managed to it manages to reflect the core values that the child uh, must uh, develop but now we just talk in general say we uh, we talk about comprehensive development but we do not specify what values the child can have and also in terms of contents we still wish to have a comprehensive development but it should be cell uh, centered and for education activity we should pay more attention to those that can uh, develop the motto um, uh, uh, competencies for example playing uh, uh, practice 
and we should pay more attention to creative art and to make the children closer to the nature because in our preschooling program it seems that the chins are in-house rather than outdoors and also we should facilitate the child to develop uh, themselves uh, over the time and expected results we do hope that uh, we ought to have the outputs presented in the form of um, the competency developed rather than what the, um, uh, the list of long knowledge to be attained by the children so these are the orientations but however, um, the uh, uh, orientations are being finalized. It is expected that next year uh, we can uh, make available recommendation to the MOET, uh, the uh, education uh, framework. And uh, I do hope that uh, with this presentation, uh, the preschooling institution are either in the public or private sector can see how you develop your own school uh, program and you can be better focused and how you can visualize how you can facilitate the children to develop for the future. Thank you very much for your listening.